I hope everyone's doing well so welcome back to another lesson I mentioned that this lesson should hopefully be a game changer for a lot of people the point of this specific lesson is to bring together a lot or almost all of the teachings that I've given you guys so far and even this in a way you know we can call it a kind of you know brief outlook more so it will be less reasoning but more you know kind of like a checklist of what i do and i've actually made a complete checklist a kind of quick overview that you guys could use if you want to you know you can take and edit it add your own stuff and whatnot but one more thing just you know apologies for getting this lesson out late been quite busy this week i've had a couple of zooms with some of the guys in mentorship so yeah just helping them out and stuff had some delays but yeah, hopefully this is going to be a very, very good one for you guys. So let's let's talk about the daily candle, right? I know I've got a lesson on the daily candle. But you know when we trade, we trade intraday. And we execute somewhere here, right? You know, somewhere in here, somewhere in this daily candle, we try and find trades. Right? So one thing, right, that's very important to note we typically expect asia to range what do we have on or rather above and below a consolidation liquidity right we'll have sell side liquidity here buy side liquidity here now this is going to be very important just remember that i mentioned that keep that in mind so here you know i've written the plan I was just thinking about what do I do? You know, when I sit down, when I think of a trade, what are the main things that I consider? What is my, you know, kind of bare minimums? And these are not concrete. So, you know, kind of as a disclaimer, like, please, this is not it. It's not conclusive. There's more things, but it depends on context. I've written, you know, let's consider the weekly range, the daily range. Some, some days I might be considering a four hour range. You know, it will depend on context, but weekly and daily is a must. Considering the time of week, what day is it? What weekly profile am I in? You know, bearish, bullish, my daily bias, high time frame arrays, dick pulls, we'll get into this, and these concepts that I've taught. So, you know, of course, if you're on this lesson, I'm hoping you've watched everything first. So everything here should make sense. AR, right? And the next point stands for Asia range. Anticipating a run on Asia range liquidity via Judas swing. Anticipate your market structure shift during London. OT entry to get into that market structure shift. Take the trade towards a draw on liquidity. So cool. Seems quite simple, right? I mean, if, if you've watched everything, I hope you can understand everything here. If you can't understand everything here, please come to me should kind of you know in a way be a bare minimum now should be able to get all of this but yeah that is pretty much all the i guess we can say compulsory things i'll consider every single time to build a framework once we have a framework you know we can sometimes play within that framework for a prolonged period of time you, know, you can use the same framework for a whole week sometimes perhaps you know? and i think with trading one thing i will recommend to you guys very important that we do write down things we understand the importance of when to use something rather than you know just how to use it it's very very important especially the idea of doing top-down analysis even me the way i've written this plan you know it involves literally the first things that i start with working downwards and i hope it's quite logical you know we start on weekly because it's the higher time frame we move to daily you know we consider news because we know it affects price we consider daily bias because you know we're trading on that specific day we consider the arrays that were around right so i hope some of you just listening to this are able to visualize some of these things and understand what i'm talking about but let's get on the charts and try and actually frame all of this okay so one thing i forgot to mention before we you know carry on with our plan let's say 
was ADR. So, you know, if you've already started to write down and copy that last slide, please make sure to add ADR in and I'll tell you guys in a second where it's going to be relevant. So cool. This is a weekly chart. Let's delete this for a second. Yeah, this is our local weekly range. We understand that price is bearish, right? Very, very clear. You know, we had a range from here to here, price retraced to the premium. We then had a range from there to here, price retraced to equilibrium. Then had a range from here to there. A bit of a smaller range this time. As you guys can see, price, you know, pushed into the premium this weekly order block. And then we have our current, what we can call our local weekly range. So cool. Now that we have a weekly range, right? Episode, I believe it is 10, 10.5. We speak about ranges. You no, know, we want, if we're bearish, which we are bearish here, we want to move into our premium. And from our premium, we'd like to see a move lower. Correct? So coming into this week, this week, you know, open down here. Would it be fair to say, you know, we wanted a bullish week? I'd say so. You know, we wanted to move into the premium. Definitely this imbalance that existed around this area. We definitely wanted to come into that. And coming into our daily time frame, right? You wanted to move into this imbalance. These order blocks. Right, quite nice. Cool. The next thing I've written is let's consider our daily range. So our daily range, right? We can consider from potentially this high over here. This high to this low. But I'm going to disregard this, right? And I'm going to stick to our weekly range. The reason for this is, right, most people will think if we take this high, that we've had a daily market structure shift. In this context, this is what's very important, right? Context, understanding what's happening around price. This isn't true. Above this high, right? Oh, above this high, what we have is a volume imbalance that we initially wanted to target earlier. We never reached it, so you know, let's just draw it on for now. So a sweep on this high, right over here, which is a daily high, into this imbalance, this volume imbalance, and even this, you know, actual fair value gap will not count as a market structure shift. Why? Because we are still in a bearish weekly range. This is why context is very important. This is also why we start on a higher time frame. Okay, cool. So let's take a step back. Let's think about what we've done now. We've marked our weekly range. We understand our daily range. And of course, in this instance, we have not marked it. Understand when, you know, coming into the weekly premium and at the moment, these four candles are a daily order block. We have traded into them and we've had a reaction, right? So now, there's one of two scenarios. We're either going to trade higher, yep, yeah, and we're going to go past this and we're going to go into this imbalance, this volume imbalance, and of course, the lower time frame fair value gap. Or, you know, we've had a reaction at this order block and that's it. And we're going to start making the move towards this discount. I mean, sorry, the low down here. Cool. Why is that important? You know, if our target is above, what do we want from the next daily candle to go up? If our target is below, what do we want from the next daily candle for it to go low, right? Quite simple. I believe the next daily candle is still going to, you know, start reaching up here. Why is this? Let's consider what the last daily candle done. The last daily candle came down, filled this imbalance, you know, even pushed a little bit lower, 
and rebalance this area. This is the Euro USD, right? Let's come on to our DXY for a second. Now, this is where, you know, context once again comes into play. For DXY, you're currently in a market maker sell model. And I would really like to see these lows go. You know, this sell side liquidity. And under this sell side liquidity, I would also like us to move into this volume imbalance before a reversal. That is what I would like to see right and if i'm adamant if i'm sure that this is my target then i can also anticipate similar from the euro usd meaning i anticipate a move up right cool so in this daily candle which has already opened i'm expecting a bullish move so let's come down onto our four hour we understand that we formed a four hour low here this is of significance because we don't want to break this, right? We understand that we have a four hour imbalance here, right? Especially once this current candle closes, we're going to have an imbalance unless we fill it within this four hour candle. Now, what I like to do is use my session indicator. I've customized, right? Let me come on a lower time frame. I've customized my session indicator so it shows me three things. The Asia range, London kill zone, and New York kill zone. Not only that, you know, it's showing me specifically ICT's Asia range. I don't think a lot of people use this, right? ICT's Asia range starts at 8 p.m. As you guys can see, 8 p.m. New York time to 12 p.m. So you know that London... Oh, sorry, the New York midnight price that I'm always on about. Very easy to identify because we know it's down here. It's here. Once this Asia range ends, we have a New York midnight price. Of course, you know, had the previous day's price action. So cool. Let's head back to the plan, right? And quickly cover what we've gone through so far. Okay, so we figured out our weekly range. We considered the daily range. And now we can consider time of week and news. So today is a Thursday. There's no significant news. There's news, I believe, for Canadian dollar. You guys can go check, right? If you're watching this video, uh, I've recorded this video for the 6th of October, so which is a Thursday. Now, right, we need to consider our PD arrays. As I mentioned, that for our imbalance, our liquidity pools and of course cbdr the asia range forming and of course you know we'll come on to these things in a second okay cool so now right back on the charts let's you know like i said it says in brackets we want to consider our high time frame arrays so you know i don't like to consider below four hour so what do i see on four hour um, i consider this this cluster of highest liquidity so I'd like to mark this as a potential target. I want them to go. I also understand that we do not want to see this low get taken, you know, in the four hour. And if we come out to our daily, I also understand that this is the previous day low and we could potentially have a run below this. I don't think we'll get a run below this, but it is, you know, you know, possible. I, I, I think it's unlikely, right? In terms of marking PDH and PDO, previous day high, previous day low, we have to be realistic, right? Remember that thing I said to consider when I first jumped on the chart, ADR. If you calculate your ADR, right? So how do we calculate ADR? Add, you know, do the high, Minus the low of this day, this day, this day, this day, this day. So the my, the last five days, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll have our ADR for today, right? The previous daily low is about 70 pips away. I don't think that's a realistic move, especially considering I'm bullish. I don't want to see a move that low. 
because then I don't think we get moved, you know, all the way back up. Right? So, again, we consider, you know, the next time frame. And of course, we've realised we have this imbalance here. In these scenarios, when, you know, in, in a way, I, we, I guess we can say, I have a lot of data to go off, I will also consider some other ranges, such as the hourly, right? Seeing what price is doing. So now, right, let's come on a lower time frame. Turn on market session indicators on. Just to just to make things clearer, right? We're gonna go off yesterday's price action. So now, right? Here's something. Please make a note of this. If the Asia range is not between thirty and forty pips, we don't like to trade London. Thirty pips is better. Thirty pips is ideal. If I use my measure tool, we consider this Asia range. That is almost 30 pips exactly, 31 pips. You know, that's lovely. Oh, that's what we like to see. Cool. Now we know Asia range is 30 pips. You know, when we jump on charts, of course, I'm assuming you're jumping on charts around London kills on time. At least most of you are. We can also consider our CBDR. Our CBDR, 2 p.m. Of course, you know, if you guys have watched the episode, we consider the wrong one. We consider the lowest low within that time and the high. And CBDR is 30 pips, right? So cool. We can use both, both are valid. CBDR can be used, bear in mind. The projections can be used to plot the highs and the lows of today so of course in terms of putting the high of today it wouldn't have been you know great use it was placed during london but you know of course the cbdr itself you can have projected it higher now cool let's think about this show let me turn my indicator off we know this is our asia range remember what i said at the start What do our consolidations have? Liquidity. Buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. This is how it works, right? You guys have watched my lesson on offset accumulation, offset distribution. Let's talk a little bit of theory here. If today's day is bearish, right? If the daily candle is going to be bearish, what do you want to see price do? What is this? Taking Asia's higher and moving lower, what is this? Offset accumulation, right? We take this buy side liquidity over here. Oh, let me delete this just so it's clearer. I hope you guys get the point now. We take the buy side liquidity up here, right? We sweep this. We even sweep these highs here. And we offset lower. That sweep funded this move lower, right? That's how I explained it in that lesson. So, what am I saying here? If your bias for the day is bearish, which a way, you know, if, if we just come here. You could have expected a bearish day as we traded into these order blocks, right? Then what do we want to see? We want to see a run on Asia's high. Because what is London? London offers us a Judas swing. What is the Judas swing? Judas swing is a move in the opposite direction to the day's bias. Bearish day, Judas swing, up. Move lower, you know? So this is the move that we want to get involved in, right? Now there's a little bit of a problem. I like this example. You know, looking at the 15 minute time frame, it's a very clear and concise example. You know, I've taught you guys a lot of things, but it's very important to realize we do not, one, have to use everything every day. And two, 
you know everything will actually not be genuinely usable either if that makes sense you know don't try and force things for example the cbdr to plot the hive today serve no purpose but asia range being that 30 pip that's what we like to see and it led us to you know know that we can trade london so cool london now runs asia's high now my you know kind of ears are up what's the next thing i can expect to run on previous daily high right which is this high over here we don't get that run so first of all i would have been feeling a bit you know let's say suspicious about this trade but this displacement downwards right remember i've mentioned displacement many times now shows me prices very prices very clearly bearish right so when this market structure shift takes place right when we take this low out i expect a retracement you know so what what happens what this is the range that forms Now, what I've taught you guys, right, we're shorting, we consider the first premium array. First premium array, mitigation block. These two candles, they are a mitigation block. Or oh, sorry, rather, um, breaker block, my fault. It's a bit late. Um, we consider this breaker block because why? This is a market structure shift. So what did I expect on this day, on this Wednesday? I wanted price to come back into this, right? Price didn't give me that trade. So guess what? I didn't trade. It's just how it is, right? It, price will not behave how you want it to all the time. Now, what else can we have done? We could have been on a lower time frame looking for an entry. But guess what? Even the five minute did not offer a great entry. In the five minute chart, you know, we have this over here, this break off, no clear entry no retracement to it right let's come even lower let's see if we find another one i genuinely just want to see if we find an entry because i didn't hop on the lower time frames and me personally i will never go under the five minute to find my entries i just don't like to do that personally now here's something interesting something i hadn't spotted earlier this is a market maker sell model initial consolidation leg up consolidation you know have that smr because why because we swept liquidity all the way over here nice and we get that displacement down so this could have been a nice trade this smr this smr actually may have offered a premium short potentially to this low well no just about right i hope you guys understand what i'm seeing i hope i'm not going too quick we had a smr we have this range because the market structure shift occurred at this low so we have this high to this low if i just move it about a bit cool and you guys can see we get a retracement to the breaker block right this this candle here is our breaker block and this imbalance but we don't go into the premium you could have still traded this off this imbalance and of course if you traded this market maker sell model from up here somewhere we trade to the bottom of this consolidation you would have had a very nice trade very quick and efficient but cool not to worry you've come on charts you've understood your asia range you've seen your london judas you're like oh i didn't find an entry today you know london didn't give me that initial mss the initial market structure shift didn't come ote what am i going to do is the day done no if you've had a market structure shift here and it's been very clear you now know that price is definitely you know bearish for the remainder of the day or at least you can be very confident it is what does that mean that means you can hunt for shorts for the rest of the day now i'll be honest the price action was not nice however in between especially new york as we open you guys can see we run this high right and we form this range and we were offered a trade here this is during london uh sorry new york kills on now i'm not saying i took this trade but this is my point you know that price is bearish so what can you do you can sit on your hands and you can wait and you wait for these shorts we had an opportunity here 
you know, you could have looked at your first array, this imbalance, you could have potentially shorted as such, you know, here, maybe you take the order block entry, me personally, I would take, you know, the imbalance. Set our stop loss there. Set our take profit here, and we would have had a very modest one to two. Nice trade, right? And then, what does price do? Offer you another trade. From this high to this low this time. So let's delete that other fib. Sorry, hope that's not confusing. Now we get another retracement into a premium. What was our first array? You know, this fair value gap and of course the mitigation. So what, you could, what could you have done again? Short it again, right? So let's just say we short it again. Let's say this time we take it off the mitigation block. Stop loss at the high. Again, this is during the kill zone, so it's in a way an optimal trade. And we have another one to 1.5, 1.5% there. This is assuming we target the low and we don't target lower. So now why could we target lower, right? What's the reasoning behind targeting lower? That thing I mentioned, ADR. If you know your ADR, right? Let's say our ADR is here. So, sorry, rather, the high of the day is here. We know this now. We're fairly confident this is the high of the day. Let's assume that the ADR is about 100 pips. So, okay, cool. If the ADR is about 100 pips, when we were shorting, we can at least short to, you know, here. Right, we can assume that price will meet that ADR, and once we've met that ADR, we don't really expect it to short anymore. Now, I just made up that 100 number. If we really go back and check, that ADR could have been 120, could have been 130, could have been anything for the past five days, and it would have allowed you to short lower. But regardless, selling opportunities were offered. Yeah, so what am I doing here? Let's go back, let's rewind all the way. Hope you guys can't hear my laptop the fans very loud we understood the weekly range then come to our daily we understand we've had a reaction here right i want price to trade higher so did i partake in shorts no i didn't right i'm being honest with you guys it's just how it works me personally i would rather see one more confirmation that will bearish you know for us to take out another four hour low for us to trade lower today and then i'll be like you know cool we're bearish. I don't really expect to go back into that, you know, up here. But I do think we'll go up there, you know, based on what the DXY is doing. So cool. We then come, have our chart, check on our four hour, we check on our raise. We understand we have imbalance here and whatnot. Now, bear in mind, I'm recording this at night. So I have this imbalance here. You know, if you open the charts at London Kill Zone, it'll be very different. You might have a you know different order block formed or whatever. So, of course, it depends on context as always. Come to our 15 minute usually. Right now, let's imagine it's a new day. Wait for the age range to form. You know, I consider my CBDR. My CBDR has formed, right? So from this candle, this candle. We consider the low and up to eight o'clock, which is start of Asia. This is 54 pips. So, you know, you guys have watched the CBDR lesson, 54 pips. You know, we can brush that. We're not using that. So far, where's the Asia range? So far, it's about 22 pips. We want it to go to that 30, 40 mark. And of course, we can anticipate this. Now, I've given you guys the framework for how I look at each daily candle, right? I've considered, you know, the Asia range. You know, we're going to have the sell side liquidity, the buy side. In this instance, am I marking previous daily high, previous daily low? No, I explained why. You know, in this scenario, I don't think it's 
achievable for price to reach there. And other times, you know, it is achievable. Usually, again, once again, it depends on context. If you guys aren't, you know, comfortable enough understanding what I mean by based on context and it's confusing you, do this. Look, mark out your previous daily high, mark out your previous daily low every single day. Just mark it out, right? How long does it take? It takes you 20, 30 seconds. It will change every day, but you can just do it. So do that. And then it will just be easier to see. If it, if price trades there, you know, you're going to see a price trade there. Or it may not, and, you know, you don't really lose anything. But we definitely anticipate the run on Asia. Definitely. And if the previous daily high and previous daily low are in reach, we also anticipate the run on them. But of course, what are charts, right? Let's talk about basics. What is CBD or what is Asia range? The last thing I want to leave you guys with. They're points of data, right? 30 pips, 30 pips, blah, blah, blah. These are all numbers, but what is it? It's data. This data is giving us context. What else is context? What else is data? This market structure shift. Right? That market structure shift that occurred. When you're here and you think, oh, yeah, we're going to run the previous daily high. But this market structure shift occurred and you see that one minute market maker sell model. You can be fairly confident that we're going to be bearish from now. Right? For the remainder of the day, we're going to expand downwards because... Remember what happens in each candle, we usually typically contract early in the candle. So what was this move up? Contraction to form the wick above. And what was this, this, you know, this whole down move? This was the expansionary move, right? That's important to note. These are all points of data. And that is what, you know, your context really is. It's the data that the charts are giving you. You have to consider it and you have to be very dynamic. This is why there's no one set model. When we trade, it changes every day. It changes because the charts are different every day. You know, the charts change. Therefore, what we see and what we expect will also change with them. You know, quite basic, but it's just applying a bit of logic. And that's why I don't want you guys to get stuck on, oh, yeah, this is the model. This is the model. In itself, this is the model. You know, London makes a run on Asia high, potential run on previous daily high, previous daily low. We anticipate a five minute market structure shift intraday. We expect the market shift to come OTE, you know, premium if we're short and discounting for buying. And then we sell it towards the drawn liquidity. How do I decide to take profit? You can use your ADR. You can try project it with your CBDR, you know, whichever way you like. Or if you want, we can keep it simple and just target the low. We can, you know, take the one to two. If you want, you can target the other side of, side of Asia. You know, simple trade. Take whatever you're comfortable with. Me personally, I like taking my quick trades. I want to be in and out of the market quick. If it's a one to two, I'm very happy. Any more than that, I'm extremely happy. You know, you have to figure out what works for you. But please, 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 everyone listening to this right now, write down a plan just as I have. Please include ADR in it. ADR, one of my favorite things to use. Don't miss that out. So I don't know how I managed to miss it out. Any questions you have, any, you know, setups and plans you guys make, please, like, send them to me. I'll take a look at everyone's. I'll check through it. We can go through it if you're missing anything, if I think you should add anything. But that's about it from today's lesson. I do think there were a lot of things to take in today, right? But I don't think I really introduced you guys to anything new. All this lesson was a combination of everything I taught you separately beforehand. So if there's specific things you're struggling with, go and rewatch those lessons. If you're still struggling, come to me. Of course, I'll help you. But again, like I said, you know, everyone make your plans and be prepared when you're on charts. You know, don't jump onto charts and try freestyle. That's not how you stay in this game for a long time. It took me a while to learn that. So I'm telling you guys now from first-hand experience, the sooner you make a plan, and you start sticking by it, the better it will be. And trust me, it's not going to be something you regret. As usual, any questions, any help, just hit me up. All my socials are there. You guys can at me in chat or PM me.